What are you doing? Aloha! I'm going to be starting a patu. This is a Maori weapon from Aotearoa or New Zealand. Uh, the patu is similar to a mere. But a mere is usually made out of stone um, rather than wood or bone. Uh, the pato I'm going to be making is going to be uh, relatively small. The, the piece of koa I have here is uh, a cross-sectional. This is not traditional wood that you'd make a pato out of. Uh, this is Hawaiian wood. Uh, but I really love working with koa and, and mixing koa with, with various other cultures and various other styles. and so. It just fits perfect. <laughs> uh, the first thing I'm going to be doing is drawing out uh, just the center lines and, and everything I need for this. One of the things that you'll notice as I go through is that uh, I drew the initial piece and then I realized that the, the bark as well as a, a section of rot kind of was getting in the way and so I needed to figure that out and then clean that up and then from there I was able to, to really draw out a section that would work well. So now I have the basic shape drawn out. I cut it out on the bandsaw. I'm just going to be working my way down slowly with uh, 36 grit on this angle grinder. Um, it's going to probably take a while, so it's a simple piece, but uh, I want to be careful not to gouge out any sections. I want to have a really even takedown of both sides, so I'm just constantly checking it, making sure everything is straight, um, and I'm just going to be taking it down just a little at a time, a little at a time until I get it to a good, uh, good shape. As I was going down, I uh, just continued to work on the piece, I noticed that my camera stopped recording. And so I, I grabbed my phone and I, I put it up top and just kind of balanced it on the edge. <laughs> uh, so what I'm doing here is uh, I'm just drilling out the uh, eye at, this, at the end of the patu. This is going to be where the lashing is going to go through. 
you'll see the first parts of those markings that I've made that uh, design towards the back end. I'm going to be cleaning that up later. First thing I'm going to do is uh, continue taking this down. I'm going to sand it down to probably around 220. And once I have it sanded down to 220, I'll mark in uh, the rest of the piece and then I'll take it down to 320 and then finally down to 1000 grit before I do uh, my first oil on the piece. I'm going to be finishing up the marking here. Um, I'm only going to do just part of it for the camera. Uh, I don't have a wide angle on my phone like I do with the other camera. And so I was kind of just putting it here just so you could see uh, what I'm doing to, to make those grooves. But um, it was kind of a hassle to do it from here. So I took it down and, and put it on my lap and did it from there. I use tongue oil to oil the pieces. Um, I'll rub it in and then give it about 24 hours, just overnight essentially, and start working on it again the next day. Um, this is by far my favorite part of just every piece that I make, um, watching the, the grain and the curl come out on the coal wood. Absolutely beautiful. So the first couple tests I'm going to be doing are just against the ballistics gel. Uh, I don't expect the Pato to do much to it. The ballistics gel is very bouncy. <laughs> if you don't have a good edge, it just doesn't cut into it. It doesn't bite into it very easily. Um, this would definitely break bone if you were to hit someone with this with good force. Um, but it's not going to cut into the ballistics gel too well. Uh, after that, I'm going to hack away some fruit and have some fun there. Say hello to my little friend. I love shark tooth weapons. <laughs> oh, they're just so satisfying. They just cut so good.
All right, everyone's hungry. <laughs> Time to cut up some fruit. Okay, <laughs> 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 